Uh, Joel Sherman, the entire inside corner dedicated to Juan Soto. This is unprecedented. Let's rock. Good morning, by the way. Let read your piece in the post. It lays it out beautifully. Where are we overall on Juan Soto? Yeah, I think you, not only this segment, this is the week of Juan Soto. Okay. Between now and next Tuesday, uh, the strong suspicion is he will be traded. The uh, Nationals offered 15 years at 440, and once there wasn't a counteroffer to that, they knew, well, what are we doing here? We have to at least explore this. And in the exploration, they're finding there is incredibly motivated buyers. Why would there not be? If you had had one at bat to try to win a World Series right now, who would you pick? It's probably this yes. guy. By the way, he's 23. By the way, you don't just get him for this pennant race. You would get him for three pennant races. By the way, he just won the home run derby uh, with all this focus on him and played great in the 2019 postseason. So you know he can handle it. So you've got one motivated buyer after another lining up. And I think between now and next Tuesday, Washington just keeps going, well, this is the offer here. Can you beat it? Can you beat it? And then best one win. That's interesting you say that because in your piece it said the Nats are focusing on one or two, right? Is that the, the top one or two? Are the Cardinals in that? So, so I, I think one of the things to keep in mind is the general manager of the Washington Nationals, Mike Rizzo, is a scout at heart. And he's going to fixate on a couple of players. Like last year, the belief was he fixated on Kiebert Ruiz, the catcher. Uh, and that's why Max Scherzer and Trey Turner ended up Dodgers. So, the, you know, John Heyman, our colleague, and my colleague at the Post, we were just calling around and we're asking, who are the favorites here? Who are the favorites? And people just kept coming around to the Cardinals. Just because they have the combination of what the Nationals would be looking for, which is young, controllable players already proving things in, the, in the major leagues. Dylan Carlson, Nolan uh, Gorman, uh, Brendan Donovan, et cetera, plus top prospects, Jordan Walker, uh, you know, uh, Mason Wynn. So, like, they have this combination that they could pull from without really destroying their team either this year or in the near future. The big question that came up in all of our conversations is, they really need starting pitching more than they need another bat. But how do you ignore this bat when it's out in the market and you might be able to get there? So, you know, who knows where he ends up? But the Cardinals, just for positioning, came up more when we asked this question than any other team. Interesting. So you separated this into tiers and the Cardinals yeah. best position. Which team is most motivated? A team that has to win now. So I think the most motivated buyer here should be the Seattle Mariners and they're clearly going to be going for this also. They haven't made the playoffs not only the longest Lauren in Major League Baseball since 2001 but among the four major sports they haven't made it the longest right now they're operating without Julio Rodriguez whose wrist is is not great but you can imagine the motivation let's put him with Rodriguez again not just now these were the two finalists in the home run derby last week let's put them together for three pennant races and you're seeing the the quality of you know, Noel V. Marte, you didn't think I'd get the first name. You, you nailed I, it. I nailed it. Uh, but, but also, uh, not listed here, Emerson Hancock, George Kirby, young pitchers who could be part of this. So I think they're the most motivated. Okay. They, pro they probably, to your point, they probably saw Soto and Julio yeah. Rodriguez in the Derby and kind of let their minds wander what could who be. Who wouldn't? Right? Exactly. What about the Dodgers? I, are there? Do they have more prospects? Than they they I, do. I, I think about their lineup, and, and, by the way, with Betts, Freeman, and, and Soto and Turner. How about Turner? Oh my gosh. Well, I think that they're a team that's proved enough is never enough, right? That is right. They, at, true. at the trade deadline, think about these recent years. You Darvish, Manny Machado, Turner insures the last year. In an offseason, Mookie Betts willing to take on the contract yeah. to David Price to get it done. This is a team that believes in the great player that changes your fate and that that's worth giving up prospects. Now they've traded a lot in recent years and they might not want to bleed more, but I think the thing they most want to do is win another championship. And just imagine trying to get through that lineup, that top four in the lineup over and over in any game. I think it's a hard player for them to ignore and I think they'll certainly be at the doorstep trying to get this mm, done. They don't take a chance. They never think they're good enough always tinkering. Speaking of tinkering, I always think I've learned a few things covering the sport for a while. AJ Preller's never done. Padres in there? Yeah, you know, I describe them as the aggressor. Like when it, with AJ Preller as their general manager, there will not be a special player who goes on the market 
that he's not going to try to figure out a way to go get. And with everything they've done in the last three or four years, they do still have top prospects to go and do this. C.J. Abrams, Robert Hassel, their, their young outfielder you see there listed one. At the Futures game, his name came up as just as much as anyone else's as a kind of special Which prospect. One? Hassel, okay. the outfielder. And I've heard it from, from scouts who've gone their system also who've been watching him this year, that he's the kind of player you could put at the front of a trade and get anyone. And look, the, the they probably can't catch the Dodgers in the in the West this year, but they're in position to make the playoffs. Soto is the kind of bat that changes things in the playoffs. And I just want to repeat this over and over. You get him for three postseasons, not just one. The question is, it probably, unless they could offload Will Myers or Eric Hosmer someplace, it puts them over the luxury tax. Does ownership okay that? They were in on Max and Trey too, weren't they? At the time. Right to the end last year. Right to the end. Anyone I'm missing? The field? Yeah, the, the, I, I say the field because we could be surprised by what happens here. The Giants, remember, they were in for Giancarlo Stanton. They were in for Bryce Harper. When people say they won't go after this type player, of course they will. They know what it meant to have Barry Bonds filling that ballpark for years. They know what it's going to take to outdo the Dodgers eventually in the West. Again, you get them for, for three pennant races. And I would even think of small market teams. I think of Cleveland and Tampa Bay. They have the prospects. There's a door open to make the playoffs this year. They have them for future years. And because you have them for future years, if in any of those years they feel their payroll is off or they're not going to make the playoffs, they could trade them again and recoup a lot of the prospect collateral that they give up here. He is the kind of player, because of age, quality, and control period, that pretty much any team can be, can and probably should be interested to call the Nationals and be, that what does is, it take from our Wow, system? that is surprising to me that you said Cleveland and Tampa Bay.